Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming out on Saturday night and joining us in our pseudo event space. Um, my name's Penny. I just wanted to introduce you to everybody and then I'm going to let them take over the show because you guys aren't here to see me. <laughs> <laughs> So as you know, we're all here to meet Ken Osmond and Tony Dow, who is unfortunately stuck in traffic, so he'll be here as soon as he can. Um, I'm just going to run over a quick bio for everybody, and then I'm going to pass it off to these guys. So um, Ken's book was co-authored with Christopher Lynch. He's an author that I've worked with quite a few times, and we've been talking about this event for quite a while, so I'm really glad that we finally got here. So besides co-authoring Eddie with Ken Osmond, Christopher J. Lynch is a South Bay native who has written for numerous local and national publications. He's the author of the One-Eyed Jack series of crime novels about a professional blackmailer who operates in and around the South Bay. Kind of cool. <laughs> the debut novel in this series, One-Eyed Jack, was a finalist for the 2013 <coughs> Seamus Award for Crime Fiction and a 2014 Writer's Digest Honorable Mention for Best Genre in Fiction. We actually happen to have a few copies here in the store, just in case you're dying for it. Tony Dow is a former child actor and was once a junior Olympic diving champion. He co-starred with Jerry Mathers and Ken Osmond during the six-year run of the show Leave it to Beaver and played Wally, Beaver's older brother. After the show's cancellation in 1963, Tony Dow played many other TV series such as Dr. Kildare, My Three Sons, and Adam Twelve. After the revival of Leave it to Beaver in the 1980s, Dow realized he enjoyed working on the other side of the camera and began writing and directing. He has directed such shows as The New Lassie, Coach, Babylon 5, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Big hero in my house. When he's not behind the camera directing, he can be found in his artist studio creating magnificent sculptures of wood and bronze. His renowned works of art can be found in several galleries as well as on his website. His sculptures were even part of a show at the Louvre in Paris. Ken Osmond, man of the hour, is a former dancer, model, and actor. He played in numerous movies and television shows and is best known for his portrayal of the overly effusive and noxious character Eddie Haskell from the TV show Leave it to Beaver. After becoming hopelessly typecast, his acting career was stalled and he turned to a variety of jobs, prop maker, helicopter pilot, before settling on a career in the LAPD. The subject of wild urban legends, Osmond saw his popularity return with the revival of the show, The New Leave It to Beaver. It hit the airways in the mid-1980s. Osmond not only revived his scheming character on the show, but he was also able to act alongside his two sons in the series. A former veteran, Osmond spends his time today supporting our military and volunteering for the American Legion. Besides his biography, biography, Osmond has also written Above and Beyond, a collection of short stories about unsung military heroes. Yeah, I can't believe we've got such a crowd here at Barnes & Noble. This is great. Yeah. I didn't, you didn't know you were this popular. Huh? No, I didn't. <laughs> Eddie who? Uh, I'd like to say... Uh, before we get started, uh, this book was a collaborative effort. There was a lot of people that really offered their input and helped us along mm. the way. And uh, I'd like to thank some of the people that made this possible. There's a lot of people that aren't here today that actually contribute to the book. Uh, first of all, we're going in alphabetical order. So uh, Alice Cooper. Uh, there was a rumor that Ken Osmond or, or Alice Cooper was actually Eddie Haskell and so I got to interview Alice Cooper for the book so that was a lot of fun. Uh, another person uh, that if it wasn't for this person Ken would not be sitting here today and we would not be all in this bookstore. His name is Henry Lane. He was Ken's partner with the LAPD. He was the man who saved Ken's life when he came this close to becoming killed on the streets of Los Angeles in not one but two he had two shootings. Henry Lane saved Ken's life. Brian Levant was the creator of the second series. He's a writer, producer. He worked on, uh, he was a writer for Mork and Mindy for Happy Days. And he's a bona fide Leave It to Beaver aficionado. His uh, email is 211 Pine Street, which was the address of the Cleaver House. Uh, Jerry Mathers also wrote the foreword to the book. He was unable to be here tonight. Uh, Bob Mosier III, who was the son of Bob Mosier Jr., 
who was a co-creator of Leave it to Beaver, and Bob, it was Bob Mosier III's friend, which you'll read in the book that you're going to buy, and buy for your friends for Christmas too. It was Bob Mosier's friend who was the original Eddie Haskell, who was uh, the show, the character was modeled upon. Uh, Dayton Osmond, who is Ken's older brother, who is also a model and an actor. He was unable to be here. And Kim Roderick, who was a very, very special friend of Ken's when he was an LAPD officer, uh, he and Henry kind of adopted her. She was, uh, she was kind of a, a lost soul, and they were able to kind of like really help her out. And it was one of the things that he feels most proud about with his LAPD career. Now, those that are in attendance tonight, my lovely wife, Charlotte Lynch, who put up with me writing this book for about a year and a half, and uh, all the time she's... She told me she was leaving the house and I never heard her. I was in the zone and she <laughs> walked out. Uh, Sandy Osmond, Ken's lovely wife. Uh, Steve Fisher, is Steve here? Steve was supposed to be here. Steve was another LAPD officer. He was the first on the scene when Ken got shot. Uh, Eric Osmond, come on Eric, don't be shy. Eric Osmond, Ken's oldest son. And Eric was instrumental in resurrecting and cataloging all of the photos that you see in the book. These are photos, most of which have never been out on the internet before, and it, these come from the family archives. And Ed, Eric is known as the kind of historian of the family. And he acted... He is. <laughs> you are now. And he acted along with his brother, Christian Osman, along with their famous dad, in the revival series, The New Leave it to Beaver. Also, we have Tony Dow, <laughs> fellow actor, and of course, Ken Osmond. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Jill Amadeo, who's sitting there in the purple dress. Jill is a renowned writer of biographies, memoirs, and uh, she, she was there when I needed her to ask her all these questions about writing biographies. So thank you, Jill. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, kind of an interview here. And then we're going to have some trivia questions. And we have some prizes. We have some special shirts. They say, Eddie is my best friend. <laughs> One of a kind. And so we're going to ask these trivia questions. They're not, they're not too, too tough. They're not, I'm not trying to chump the stump here. Or stump the chump. Can I, can I answer them? And get a... No, you can't get a t-shirt. <laughs> so, uh, Ken, tell us a little bit about your early life growing up as a dancer, model, and then finally making your way into acting at age six. I had a, uh, what's referred to in Hollywood as a uh, movie mother. Very typical. Uh, Tony has never experienced this, so... No, I didn't have no. a movie mother. But... Uh, my mother had... Uh, great ambitions for myself and my brother and so uh, we went to, to classes we went to dancing classes tap ballet minuet uh, square dancing you name it we went to fencing classes and dressage classes and uh, God knows whatever you can take <laughs> every day after school I was either at a class uh, or an interview those were just part of the routine. I, I have people often ask me if it was fun being, you know, an actor as a child, and frankly, I don't have any memories of not being around the industry. It was just a way of life. It wasn't good or bad. It was just life. Uh, I like Paul Peterson's uh, question when people say, "Well, you, you got in. How, how did you get into the business?" And he says. My mother was bigger than I was. <laughs> I tell you, I, I don't regret any of it, though. I mean, it, it has uh, served me very well throughout my whole life. In, uh, in Ken's many roles in movies uh, as a child actor, there's one that stands out. In this movie, he was killed in a car accident, and as he lay dying, a famous leading man of the time kissed him. Okay, just shout out the answer. First person gets it right, gets a t-shirt. Who was that leading man? Clark Gable. Rock Hudson. Rock Hudson. Okay. <laughs> that was before AIDS. 
So, Ken, can you tell us about some of your early film and TV roles? Uh, the first uh, actual paid film role that I had was a uh, one of the last of the big blockbusters made at MGM. Uh, it was called Plymouth Adventure, and it had uh, Van Johnson, and it had uh, Spencer Tracy, Don Adams, uh, a lot of big top name stars. And uh, I spent three months uh, on that one, and that was the first experience really in front of a, a, a movie camera and actually getting paid to do it. So, uh, but on from there, I did so many of the early 50s TV shows, most of whom uh, you, you'd never remember. Uh, Lawman, Texan, uh, Loretta Young Theater, Telephone Time, uh, uh, just so many of them. It seemed like every other week I was doing a different one. And that was just a normal way of life for me in, in the 50s until 1957, when uh, I went to a standard, what they're referred to as a cattle call. At, at, uh, it was Republic Studios then. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and for this new television show they were producing, called Leave it to Beaver. And uh, it was hundreds of kids there at the time. And then a little later on, you get a call back, and there's fewer kids, and then fewer and fewer. It just got narrowed down, and I got lucky. Somebody <laughs> liked me. Last man standing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, time for another trivia question. One of the TV shows that Ken Osmond did early in his career uh, and don't answer it if you bought the book. All right, you book. <laughs> Tony Dow would years later direct a revival series of that show. Can you name the show? Lassie. Who said that? Me. You got a t-shirt. It was Lassie, and Ken was on it how many times? I, was, I did two Lassies. Uh, very early on in the, in the shows, in the series, uh, Tommy Reddick was a child in there, and I did one with Tommy Reddick. And then later on, I did one with John Provost. Uh, so I did two lassies. Yeah, I did two lassies also. I, I think everybody in town did. <laughs> did two lassies. <laughs> Wait a minute, Ozzy and Harriet, everybody did everybody those. Everybody did that, yeah, that's true. But then I directed about five of the new lassies. So that was fun. Yeah. Okay, uh, before the show Leave It to Beaver came on, there was actually a pilot movie. Can anybody name the pilot movie, or pilot show? Small World? Yep, all right. <laughs> okay, and, and on that, there was the a character who was the forerunner of Eddie Haskell. Yeah. Yeah, let me finish the question. <laughs> You're making them too easy. <laughs> okay, I'll no give more softball. I'll, I'll give you a hard one, okay? What did Ward Cleaver do for a living? Uh, that's not fair. I know this is not a fair question, but I'll, I'll throw it out because you, these others have been too easy. Insurance. They're all saying insurance. No? They, uh, that's a, a standard answer I get. He worked in the salt mines. With yeah. Fred Rutherford. Yeah. yeah. Minister. Yeah. Minister. And once in a while he'd go on a business trip, I'd, I'd be gone o over the weekend. Minister was real life at one point. Yeah, he was. He was a minister. He was a minister but in real life. People don't realize that Ward Cleaver, the, the Cleavers and the Nelsons were actually welfare families. They didn't work. They just collected money and. You know, <laughs> they, were, look, they gave the illusion of going to a job. But but uh, Ozzy never even had the pretext of having a job. He just hung around the fence or outside. <laughs> Okay, so this one for both Ken and Tony. So after you landed the role of Eddie, what was it like doing the show? What was your schedule like on the show? What was a typical week and what you guys do? You want to take this one, Tony? Well, I'll start off and then you can correct me. Okay. <laughs> that part's wrong. <laughs> Let's see, on Monday we'd have a reading. Uh, we, the, the kids would all come into school. We'd go to school for three hours a day. Uh, hopefully that wasn't one of the questions. And, uh, <laughs> and, I'll throw uh, this card away. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we'd have a reading in the show, and the producers would listen, or the writers and producers would listen, and they would see um, what seemed to work and what didn't work. And oddly enough, if there was a big laugh, big jokes, 
usually that was gone. That was one of the first things that was gone. They weren't really interested in jokes. They were interested in sort of warm fuzzies. So the next day we would um, rehearse with a cameraman there so that he, we'd block the scenes and uh, the director and the cameraman would figure out how they were going to shoot it. And then the, the last three days we, uh, we shot it. And it, you know, it's not easy to shoot a half hour TV show in three days, but because of all that preparation, we were able to do it. How did you? Not bad. Okay. Not bad. A <laughs> uh, couple of unique things there. Uh, today, nobody uses film, it's all video camera. Back then, we used a 35 millimeter Mitchell camera, which is what they use for big screen motion pictures. I don't think they even have them anymore. I don't know if if they do film today, it's on a 16 millimeter. Well, so, we do film actually. Uh, what's his name? Um, oh, great! My senior moments are going to get worse. Chandler's um, it's the biggest director Steven around. Steven hey, there we go. <laughs> Give that T-shirt. <laughs> anyway, he shoots film. And uh, and he still edits on film too, which is interesting because he's one of the last last people to do that. Yeah, my, That's my, all. Okay. My, my, <laughs> my older son is a film editor, and that's a mis <laughs> that's a misnomer because he never sees film. It's all on the computer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's another question. Uh, leave it to Beaver question. Leave it to Beaver broke ground by being the first show to show what on television. Bathroom? Bedroom. Who said a toilet? <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about and then, that? And then it was, uh, we showed a toilet tank. Oh. And they had to go to the sensors yeah. because they, they wouldn't let them do it. And the boys were putting an alligator in the toilet tank because they'd gotten an alligator from uh, Captain Jack's farm or something. And it was a little bitty guy. And uh, so it was floating around in the toilet tank, but the um, sensor said, no, can do, can't do it. And uh, they went to bat for it. And that was the first time. What year was that? 57. 1957. And that was supposed to be the very first show that showed. And it was the first one you guys taped, but then they had to put it film or film, excuse me, and uh, but then they had to kind of put that one off in the can and then you did a, they premiered with a second, a different episode because they were still working with the sensors. Yeah. To try to show sure. the top of a toilet tank, if you can believe that. Does anybody watch HBO and Showtime? <laughs> so when you guys were working together on the show, I'm sure there was some downtime between uh, filming and school. What did you guys do goofing off and everything? What sort of things? We were, we were kids. I mean, <laughs> we, we goofed off. We played, uh, they'd, uh, the, the crew had set up a basketball court outside the sound stage. So we had that to play with. We tossed a baseball back and forth and uh, basically we were just kids. Yeah, I remember one day somebody, we were playing baseball and somebody pitched the ball and I hit it. Don't say who it is. Okay. Okay, I won't. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. But no don't no, say no, who it was. Well, okay, this is a trivia kind of story, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Forget it. You'll hear about it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But one thing that was really cool was we were, um, it was like being, uh, you know, a kid in a candy store because we're on these lots, movie lots, first uh, review, uh, Republic, and then over to Universal. And um, we had full run of the lot. So we play hide and seek on the set that uh, they were shooting a western on, or the you know the L.A. Uh, they, they'd shoot a New York street scene on. We all uh, it was just it was it was a lot better than the um, than the hard uh, asphalt at the local elementary school. <laughs> so one time they were between scenes, Ken, Tony, and Jerry playing baseball, and somebody probably Tony because he was the jock of the show. Hit a long fly ball and broke the windshield of a very famous actor's car. Who was that actor? Steve McQueen. <laughs> nah. <laughs> these, these people know everything there is. Yeah. To know. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. And uh, so, what was it like attending school on the set? 
Uh, that was uh, very, very much uh, regulated by law. Uh, we had to attend school for three hours a day, uh, and that took uh, priority over anything else. If, uh, if there was only 20 minutes left in the day, uh, and we had 20 minutes of school left to do, the teacher would uh, shut down the shooting, and we'd go back to school. It, uh, it was very, very critical, and uh, so we had our three hours of education, and it was, if, if you took advantage of it, it's a hell of an opportunity, because you got a one-on-one -on -one situation, you and the, the teacher. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> well, you I did. was going to tell you about that. <laughs> well, actually, the first show I ever did was a pilot, and it was at Columbia, and uh, I had two shows and it was probably a three week uh, job or something and I got so far ahead that my moms took me out of school and we went to Hawaii for two months and I didn't miss a beat so um, it is a really good uh, good education if you apply yourself my mom took me to more interviews <laughs> <laughs> now there was one day in school though where uh, because uh, the the older kids and the younger kids were segregated, right? Yeah, it was later on. Yeah, the first couple of seasons we were all pretty much together in the same place. Uh, later on, though, uh, there became a a gap between the younger kids, Jerry and Larry Mondello, and whatever, and the older kids. So they got two teachers in, uh, which was actually a, a real good idea. I'm glad they did that. Yeah. And, and it was probably good because one day when Ken, Tony, and Frank and some of the other older guys were in school on set, Ken brought in some rather risque photos to show the other guys. That's by 1950s standards. Yeah. <laughs> Not by today's standards. And, and they were all ooing and aahing until the teacher showed up unexpectedly. And who do you think got stuck holding the bag, if you will? <laughs> yeah, Tony. Tony. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, if we have uh, we have a few minutes, we can take a few questions from the audience. So, did you do public schools also? And were you did you grow up in the valley, or where did you grow up? Oh yeah, I, I went to North Hollywood High School. Uh, <clears throat> when I wasn't working, I'd go to regular school. On the days that I worked, I went to the, the tutor on the set. Uh, Tony Tony was pretty much full time at the studio. Yeah, I never went to a, a public school, either junior high or high school. And one of the things that was interesting was our producers, Joe Connolly and Bob Mosher, wanted us to be like regular kids. So one of the things that they did, which was opposite from all the other shows, was we took our hiatus, our f couple of months off, during the summer. So we could we didn't have to go to school. We could do whatever we wanted. Most other shows, they would work the kids because they didn't they had uh, didn't have to go to school for three hours, so that gave them three more hours of shooting time with the uh, with the kids. So we were really really lucky. You know, the the producers really uh, gave an awful lot of consideration to making it a family. Yeah. Uh, even even the crew members, the makeup man, uh, the uh, wardrobe man, they were. Really uh, neat people. We got along all like a big giant family. I don't know if this is uh, a, a true story. I mean, it happened, but I don't know if it's the first time it happened. The first day of shooting, uh, one of the crewmen said something like hell or, you know, whatever. And uh, they came right down, and that crew guy never was on the set again. So they really, uh, they really protected us. No toilets and no hell. <laughs> we come Didn't a long protect way. me. <laughs> okay, we had a question in the back. I, I'd like to know how to lift a 900-pound Harley while you're on top of it. Uh, this guy's read the book. Actually, uh, in motor school, they teach you exactly how to do that. At one time in my life, I could get on a motorcycle on its side start it up and ride it up onto its wheels. Yes, they teach you to do that. <laughs> Got a question right here. Is there a place, Metzger's Field? I'm sorry? Metzger's Field. Oh, uh, it's strictly fic uh, fictitious. <laughs> it's on the lot at Universal. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the back of some writer's mind. <laughs> yes. 
I was wondering if you had any reflections on working on the Munsters, the episode of the Munsters. Uh, other than I was uh, still part of the same group of people that I was working with, uh, so I, I knew most everybody on the show. Uh, it was same just, writers and producers. No. <clears throat> so it was, it was just another show. Got a question over here? I, I want to know, I haven't read the book, and I want to know what was it like changing from being an actor to being a police officer? And did anybody ever recognize you if you arrested them? <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't hear the question back there, what's it like going from an actor to a policeman? And did people recognize me on the street? Uh, first off, it is an ego trip. Yeah, on uh, one day you're a big time TV star, and then you get hungry. <laughs> in 1969, I had gotten married, had bought a house, had a mortgage payment, and I needed a job. And the city of Los Angeles said, I got one for you. So I became a police officer. And on the street, no. People generally didn't. Once in a while, but when, when a policeman is talking to you, you don't see the policeman. You see the badge. The gun, the leather jacket, <laughs> you don't see the policeman, so that rarely happened. And, yes? Do you guys have favorite episodes? I hate that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a real yeah, common question. Get out of here. No, I, I don't. The, the most favorite of people that I talk to is uh, Beaver and the Teacup on a billboard. But uh, I don't have a favorite. Well, I have a favorite, but you know, all the shows had some sort of underlying message that they were, they didn't hit you over the head with it, but it was, uh, it was, you could learn a lot from watching the show. I think that's why it stayed around so long. But my favorite show was when uh, Ward decided to take everybody to the, to the lake uh, where he used to fish when he was a kid. And of course, June didn't have anything to wear, so. But, and the boys wanted to go see uh, voodoo z zombies or something like that, <clears throat> and um, at the theater. And uh, he talked them into it. They all got in the car. They went out. They went in a rowboat. They went out. They caught a bunch of fish. And Ward was so pleased that he could go back to his childhood. So when he went, you know, when they went up, they talked to the guy who and rented them the boat, and the guy said, yeah, we just stocked the, uh, the pond yesterday. <laughs> so he was a little disappointed at that. And, um, and then, uh, you know, it was a fairly successful weekend, but uh, at the end of the, the, the uh, last day, um, Ward wondered where the boys were, and June said, oh, they're out, they're out somewhere. And they took the binoculars, and they're out somewhere. And so... Uh, <coughs> He goes out and he's all proud, probably bird watching or something like that, and he sees him on the top of a hill <laughs> looking down, and uh, they were watching uh, voodoo zombies uh, from outer space at <laughs> 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 drive-in theater. <laughs> okay, one more question. Yes. Can you and your son still do the Haskell laugh? I was going to get him to do that. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, Eric. <laughs> Christian, too. You did it. He doesn't do it. <laughs> yeah, he, did, he did it in that one episode. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs>